Here we go. Oh, wow. There's a bit of effort going to this guy. <laughs> yeah, it certainly is. Yeah, it's coming along nicely. Will Gibson specialises in designing and installing high-end gardens in Melbourne's leafy southeast. Is this sort of typical of the gardens that you're working? Yeah, certainly around here. You know, cream and green is the way. Um, not that much colour, but a lot of form, a bit of texture. Formal with a twist. Recently, he's become something of a social media star, thanks to his videos of gardening maintenance and his cute dog, Humphrey. And there's more around here as well. Yeah, it keeps going. Will installed this garden less than a year ago, and it's a classic for this area, featuring layered hedging and tightly clipped topiary balls with cascading prostrates softening the edges. Not everyone has a garden of this calibre. Yeah. But there's a lot here that people can take away and oh, apply in their gardens. Absolutely. You've got to start with good soil. You've got to put a lot of compost and a lot of work into your soils and you've got to have, you know, good water. And then from there, you can actually build a garden of your own. But getting those foundations right is paramount. Now, I realise I'm the newest member of the team. I've got to prove myself. I'm keen. Where are we going to start? Uh, I think the astringias are looking a little bit fluffy and they could be shaped back. So how about we start there? All right, let's do it. This is a Westringia fruticosa, so native rosemary. Yep. It's incredible. It's, it's, there's so many different varieties. Bluish and grey hues, they flower really well, which is obviously really good for insects and wildlife. They'll deal with a sandy, well-draining soil, but they'll deal with a heavier soil, and they clip really well. The more you clip them, the denser and thicker they become. Where do you start? Where do you start? Well, what I tell my guys is when they're first learning how to prune a sphere is I like to get right on top of it so you can get that perfect sphere around the outside. And our first cuts are going to be all the way around the outside. And all I'm doing is I'm finding that shape. I'm looking straight down directly and I'm just getting that first ball shape from directly on top. I'm working pretty quick with my shears, but I'm not taking off much at all. Take your time with it. The more time you take, the better it'll become. That's a beautiful circle. Yeah. I can see that already. Just starting to form that top. If you maybe do that side, then... Well, you trust me. Yeah, well, just. <laughs> <laughs> Smaller cuts more frequently yeah. is, is much better than doing those big hoeing cuts. The next step is just to grab the plant and give it a really good shake up a zhuzh. Yeah. And you'll find that little bits will start poking out that may have been folded in before. Yeah. And then you can do your final wrap around your final cut, because that bit just spit out then. Yeah, I find I do a bit of a zhuzh in the morning. Yeah, you can, just, well, these are sharp hey, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Keep them away. I will. Keep them I will. away. I mean, even looking down here, I can see that's really beautiful. And then, and then over here, again, and that's, I hate to use the word perfect, <laughs> but it's looking close to perfect. It's getting there. Yeah. Right, so this is the bay laurel hedge that we planted. And the purpose of this is just to create some screening from, from the, uh, the pavement here. Um, but we want to start training it to, to thicken and, and to, to form a hedge rather than going straight up and chasing the light. So to make sure that the plant actually thickens from the bottom, we've got to make sure that we're trimming the top and so it goes up in height gradually and then you're not going to lose any of the undergrowth. So this is a really prime example of how the plant will thicken. So we've, we've done the last cut there, and you can tell since that last cut, we've got one, one two, two, three. three. Even, and, even four. four. Yeah. So that, that just, you know, with, with one stem you cut it, it'll create two. With those two, you cut them, it'll create four. Yeah. And you're just constantly multiplying, and you're thickening the hedge up. Yeah. So we'll cut at least sort of 30, 40 centimetres off that and you'll see some, some growth coming from the bottom. Doesn't really matter where we're cutting on the plant. It's such a vigorous grower that all we're doing is just forming that height. I mean, you can smell them. That's the oh, other, smell that. That's the other beauty about oh. this plant. When it rains, you can really pick up on the scent of bay. Yeah. yeah. 
I reckon that's you happy. Good, yeah, good height to work towards. We've cut a we've cut a significant amount off, and that'll just slowly thicken it up as we go along. If we look yeah. back here, that's a lovely level cut. It is. Yeah, that, yeah, very happy with that. Fantastic. What's I think, next? I think we go on to the next job. <laughs> Come on. Oh. Someone's been here before. <laughs> well, this has got a totally different feel. Yeah, it certainly does. Oh. It's slightly more relaxed and it's a bit softer. It's less structured and formal than the last garden. We've got spots of colour of the lavender, the windflowers. I love your choice of Circus there. The Circus, the forest pansy, is sort of the it tree at the moment because it's got such a beautiful form. And the idea is that it'll actually branch oh. out over this paving. Yeah. Um, oh. It'll so look you know, beautiful. You, yeah, you'll have to sort of come under it when, you, when you're coming in the front yeah. gate. I could chat about this garden all day, but there's work to do. Will has some olive trees he wants to espalier. So what we need to do is we need to um, actually snip off and just keep the laterals. Yep. But we've got to be really firm with them and only keep the ones that are going left and the ones that are going right. So I'm going to take off these ones. Anything that's coming towards me, anything that's going up oh. and as you can see very quickly we're actually forming a really nice Flat. lateral growth yeah. along this warm brick wall oh, and then we can, wire, we can wire them up and it'll actually look really nice and it'll actually look quite formal against this sort of rambling undercarriage yeah. i think it's time for the wiring all right For the supports, Will uses marine grade stainless steel that should last a lifetime and can be tightened if the cables sag. So these look really good. Yeah. Um, nice and straight, they're nice and firm, they're really taut. Yeah. Now what we've got to do is decide which branches we're going to keep and which branches we're going to train onto those laterals. Those They're going to be quite out. brutal. Yep. We only want four laterals on either side of that central stem. Yep. So that one can go there, this one can go. Just when it puts on its new growth next year, it'll really start to branch out and then you get to come back and cut all the verticals off. And yeah. I think that's great. Yeah. I think we've got a really straight vertical trunk and then we've got some really good laterals. And it's just such a, it, it, an interesting design piece and a talking point of the garden. And once it starts fruiting, well, yeah, it's game on. All right, job done. Awesome. Getting a beautiful crisp finish on your lawn like this is not difficult. It just needs a little bit of consistency and discipline. The first rule to follow is the one third rule. Never cut off more than a third at any given time. Do it in steps, particularly if you've left it grow too much. Now, the reason for that is, is if you cut in too deep, what you do is scalp the lawn and that exposes the soil. If it exposes the soil, that means it can dry out, which will damage the grass plant itself. It also opens it up to erosion when it rains. But most of all, that opening is a chance for weeds to blow in and take hold. Now, there's so many different types of lawn. This is Kaikuyu. There's buffalo and cooch, which are more traditional. But there's also a wonderful range of new lawns, particularly native grasses, which are worth giving a try. If you want to get good crops from your fruit trees, you need to fertilise regularly. Think about it. Every time you pick an apple like this, you're taking nutrients away that will need to be replenished. Apples like to get a feed of nitrogen and phosphorus because that promotes leaf and shoot growth. Generally, the best time to fertilise is in spring and right now in autumn. So what I've got here is some liquid fertiliser that I'm going to apply to each of these. But when you look at these espalier, their requirements are a bit different. You don't want to fertilise them too intensely 
because that will result in a big flush of growth. And in the process, you'll lose this beautiful framework that you're trying to achieve. So what you need to do is fertilize more regularly, but more lightly. Well, that's it. I think we're pretty much done here for the day. Thank you for letting me tag along with you and Humphrey. It's been such a treat. Tell me, how do you feel when you get to the end of a day and you've been on the tools? At the end of the day, you sort of you can turn around and, and see what you've done. There's real purpose and there's reward in, in how hard you work and, and the simplicity, but the detail of the task. I, um, I love what I do and I take a lot of pride in my work. You know, the harder the day, the better at the end of it, but it's, it's, it's absolutely fantastic and I, I wouldn't have it any other way, especially with my, um, my sidekick by my side.